Hello, welcome to Mr. Gibson's Art Page. I want to make another video about cylinders. The first video about cylinders was just one single cylinder. This time we're going to do a series of cylinders overlapping together to create a, the illusion of depth on our paper. And so you can see we have uh, multiple cylinders with these overlaps. We still have our foreshortened circle, right? And then we will also add shadows and shading to this. If you have not seen the first video on how to draw an individual cylinder, you can go ahead and go watch that video, or you can try to keep up on this one. Once again, we'll start with our foreshortened circle with the dot system. So two dots across from each other, and then I can draw my foreshortened circle. Okay, remember the foreshortened circle is when we take um, a circle and turn it on its side. It kind of distorts the circle into this squished looking one, and we call this a foreshortened circle. All right now from here, we'll go ahead and draw two edges. Okay, keep it nice and sketchy. And we'll curve the base, All right? And then we're gonna put two more behind. So we'll start with the dot, I'll have one here and here. Now we want this, as they get further back the page, they go higher up. And then they also get smaller. So we want to think about placement and size when creating the illusion of 3D. And so I'll have another one over here. And so we'll connect these two dots here. Just a little smaller. Not too much smaller, but just a little bit. All right? And then we're going to make these little hidden lines back here. These are behind this cylinder. So these will stop right there. And now because we're creating that illusion of depth, we want to we want to bring the next cylinders up on here. So I'll probably have them pop out somewhere around here. We can drag that down and then bring this up. So this is kind of behind. And just so you get an idea of what this looks like, this would, this would curve right behind here as you can see that, but we're overlapping so we won't see this part of our cylinder. I'll take this one down too, and we're gonna to try to curve that down. We wanna have that fit into this spot nicely. See that? Placement, higher up, size, a little smaller, right? And then even we call something um, intensity, which is the further back it goes, the lighter it will go as well. So we can even create that illusion by just making this one a bit darker, okay? And don't worry about erasing. We'll clean that up at the end. And let's go ahead and make a couple more. So we'll have a dot here, a dot here, a dot there, and a little dot here. There. There. So we'll do a foreshortened circle here, foreshortened circle here, another one here. All right. So we'll go ahead and add those little hidden lines first. This one's easy to do in the middle. That one's pretty much done besides the shading. And then we'll bring this down. We'll have it a similar distance. So right about here, we'll curve that line back. Same with this. Drag your edge down. Sorry. Drag your edge down, and then we'll curve this as well. Okay, don't worry about it being perfect yet. We'll clean this up, make it look really nice. We'll just get kind of the placement done first. All right, so now that we have our basic forms of our cylinders, we need to once again have that light source. Okay, so from the top right corner, and it can go from any corner, just understand that your shadows are the opposite side of the light. And so go ahead and come in here, we'll add a little ground shadow, a little cast shadow first. All right, and these ones will get a little bit over here too, over here, a little over here, a little bit over here. Shading is sometimes the more fun part of your drawing. So it really makes it pop out. It really makes it stick off the paper and, and feel 3D. And so just remember four short and circle, and that will help you with these forms. Now I'll go ahead and add a little shadow here. I'm going to use the side of my pencil, just like this. I'm using my trusty 2B general pencil, as usual. I like these drawing pencils. They're nice and soft and help shading go much easier. Do a little one over here. A little back here, a little back here, forget this guy, here, 
And even your shadows might lighten up just a touch. These objects aren't terribly far apart from each other, so there's not a, a huge difference, but a little different. Okay, then using my finger or my blending stump. This is a paper stump. It's just a um, paper stick, a blending stick, a paper stomp, lots of different things people call these things, but basically it's just a blender. You can see how I'm using it to kind of push around graphite on my paper. And so this will create a softer shadow, more realistic in this situation. Just blend these shadows over and blend, 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 blend. There we go. And when I blend like this, I am kind of thinking about the curve form here that I'm drawing. And so I'll kind of follow that form. That will, that will help a little bit with illusion of depth, three dimensional illusion. And just give a little tone up top. All right. I need to push my shadows a little darker back here, just a bit, right here, right here. And so I'm just increasing my contrast, pushing my darks darker. And I'll probably bring out my highlights a little bit more too, but first thing is let's get this shadow darker. A little bit right here. You need to, if you get too dark, you go through here with your eraser. This is your highlighter maker. And once again, back to my paper blending stick. I've seen people use Q-tips. Um, they don't work as well, that's for sure, but it's kind of usable. If you don't like getting this stuff on your finger, um, you could wrap your finger in maybe a Kleenex or something like that, I guess. You could always do something like that. If you're really worried about getting your finger too dirty, I um, always tell kids, you just got a little art finger, you'll be okay. All right, and so we can ground this by just drawing a little horizon line right across, and there you go. Now suddenly they're really looking like they're on the ground. We have rounded these cylinders. I'm just gonna define my edges a little better. Now in real life, you might not see these edges, but just want you to see them better on my paper so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so overlapping cylinders. See how many you can get 